we come uh, to our, our, our next guest and a really amazing session I've been uh, looking forward to for, for a long, long time. I bet many of you on the way here today have used a product that this man, Lars Rasmussen, created. So just give a show of your hands. Did you, anybody use Google Maps to find their way here? All right, good. Then you know what this guy has created. So he has uh, commonly considered one of the creators behind Google Maps. He started the company with his brother, Jens, that was uh, where to, that was the foundation for Google Maps. So he has been a successful entrepreneur himself. He has been very successful at, at Google and posted that is successful uh, angel investors at a company some of you might have heard of, like Canva, for example, and a bunch of other ones. So let us dive uh, right into, into uh, mapping the future. Yeah, and uh, he's also, among other things, like uh, putting Athens on the map as a, as a tech startup hub. So he said, like, one of the things when I asked him what he wants to get out of the audience, he said, he wants all of you to move to Athens. So... Let's see, he's uh, been very successful before. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, that like a thousand people are going to move to Athens. <laughs> a thousand? But let's, let's try our best. Anyway. So, I'm so glad you used Google Maps because I saw empty chairs and I'm like, wow, did someone get lost here? Was it my fault? <laughs> 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 All right, Lars. So let's dive right, right into it. Right? Like, let's start at your first part of your adventure. Let's start at uh, where, where to. So yes. um, you started that with, with your brother. You've been the, the first software engineer there. So um, tell us a bit about the founding story behind that. Yeah, so look, this was a long time ago. This was like before ChatGPT. Does anyone remember before ChatGPT? It's, uh, no, but uh, before the iPhone, you remember. This was, this was back in the dot-com bubble days. It actually all started with the dot-com bubble crashing. And the startup my brother and I worked for, someone else's startup in California, died, or almost died, and laid us off. And then my brother was like, we should work on maps. And I said, okay. And then <laughs> we started this little mapping company. It was just my brother and myself. Because we were all going to be rich in the dot-com days, we hadn't actually saved any money, which was a bad choice. And so, you know, we had to do contracting gigs and max out our credit cards and stuff like that to found it. And then we started building this prototype. My brother actually, I wish I'd saved this. He wrote me this one page email about let's make maps bigger, prettier, faster. And then he described in a paragraph how to do that, of course, right? And then, then maps can become a platform for geographic information services, which we're all used to now. But back then, MapQuest was the king of maps, at least in the US. There was other sites here in Europe. And, um, and there was mostly you know, a page of text and a little map that, that kind of illustrated it. And, and my brother wanted the map to take up the whole screen and you'd put stuff on it. And, um, and so we set out to build that. And uh, it was a, a fun journey of ups and downs, referring to the previous excellent speaker. And, uh, and, and a roller coaster. I, I often like talk about how much of a roller coaster it was. And back then we were young and there were definitely times when we were very close to giving up. Like after six months, we tried to raise money and we didn't even get a call back from any of the 10 VCs or so that we pitched. And, uh, and I like to say, you know, that we have ice in our stomach and we're just not the giving up type of people. But the truth is also that no one was hiring at the <laughs> time, right? Because the market had so completely crashed. And we're like, oh, well, we might as well just keep going, right? And this actually happened a couple of times, and I often try to make the case that economic downturns, hap we happen to be in a sort of economic downturn, now. it's actually a fantastic time to start companies because people are more willing to take risks, you know, work for less cash, more equity, do crazy things. And, and in fact, the reason you should all move to Athens, there's a lot of reasons you should all move to Athens. <laughs> Not just that it happens to be where I live, <laughs> but, uh, but Greece really went through a hard time in the previous economic downturn, right? And it created an incredible amount of resilience and entrepreneurship. And I have never seen an entrepreneurial ecosystem grow faster than Athens. Back to Google Maps. <laughs> and so we, you know, along the way, we, uh, we ran into this, uh, this, it was very hard to find anyone who would help us. 
couldn't hire anyone, we didn't have any money, we couldn't find anyone else. <coughs> and then there was this guy who had been an investor in the company that laid us off, right? And he was in a st on a stage sort of like this. We, we gate crashed, we couldn't afford the ticket, right? And so, and so we went up to him afterwards, we're like, hey, Frank, do you remember us? And then we got to show him the demo. And he had been an angel investor who lost all his money in the crash, right? But he still was willing to help. And he was like the first person who was willing to help. And, and now, uh, much later, we can draw this map of all the people that did anything useful in our startup journey. And they all can be traced back to um, an introduction by Frank, including Larry Page right, at, at Google, who eventually bought the company. right. So Frank didn't introduce us to Larry, but he introduced us to the person that introduced us to the person that introduced us to to Larry, right? And so another bit of advice I often give to entrepreneurs is to find your Frank. Um, and as an angel investor, I want to be your Frank, right? And we'll talk maybe a little later about Canva that I help way, way, way back. I was not their Frank. Their Frank's name was Bill, but I can introduce to them by Bill, and they have actually published. Uh, do you know Canva? Any Canva users here? <laughs> Oh my God, you guys are amazing, <laughs> right? So, so they published this tree, very beautiful, since they happen to be a graphics design company, right? And there's Bill at the top, and I'm sort of at the second or third layer. And so we sold, we sold the company to Google um, in uh, 2004. And back then, because we, we actually tried again to raise money, this time we got a little closer, we got, got to have some fun discussions with actually a really big VC and some smaller VCs. But just like at the last minute, you know, VCs have funnels like everyone, right? Then we got to like the 80% in their funnel and then we dropped out right before we would have signed the term sheet. And then they were the ones who facilitated the, the introduction uh, to Google and, and they bought us. By, th by then we had a, a prototype um, and it was actually not a, a website. So you gotta think back again, right? Before the iPhone, this was back when, when web was still web 1.0. And uh, it was really like a document browsing platform. And, um, and we had actually formed this theory that the reason mapping on the web was stale and hadn't progressed for like five years is that the web just can't do any better. And so we were actually building a separate C++ application you would download on your laptop and have super whizzy, super fast, super pretty maps. Um, but but was very much a thin client, right? So like all the good stuff happened in the cloud, but it was a C++ application, and, and we, we demoed this to Larry. And Larry, he's a man of very few words and even fewer facial expressions and <laughs> very hard to read. And so, but at the end of it, he said, he said, I like the way you think about maps, but Google is really a web company. Are you sure? that you can't do better on the web. And then he like walked out the door, <laughs> dropped the mic, right? Walked out the door, but got some corp dev people to come in and deal with us. And then the next three weeks was the, the most profoundly productive three weeks of our lives. I don't think we slept at all. And we're just like, this is our last chance. And so in those three weeks, we disproved one of the very theses that we built our entire company on. We found this crazy thing called, it's called dynamic HTML back then, this notion that you could write JavaScript. And um, it was actually Microsoft had this one guy in the corner, he called himself the DHTML dude, and he wrote these blog posts about this crazy thing. And so, and so we rewrote our client in JavaScript, and suddenly we like blew our own minds. And, um, and it was also like back then, uh, if you can remember, Internet Explorer was the king of the web. But, but Firefox had just like appeared on the stage, version 0 0.8. I remember this clearly, although it was 20 years ago, right? And they had, they had taken the approach that we're going to just mimic Internet Explorer to help with the written standards. Internet Explorer is the standards, and they had adopted this JavaScript thing. So we thought, we thought this, would act, this would actually work in a few years, right? And so we went back to Google three weeks later, and we just kind of casually said, you know, would something like this maybe that you're looking for? And I think we also blew their minds, and then they bought us, and it's great. And actually, do you guys know what um, Ajax is? Yeah. Oh, man, he's so young. Everyone's so young. Anyway, so so, so the, if you look up, Ajax became kind of the, the way to build a website for a while. And the paper that coined that phrase, that word, actually was all about how we'd build Google Maps, which I'm very proud of. Yeah, that's, that's and I mean, then the rest is history. A great, great story of pushing the boundaries. 
um, and I like the advice for startups to find their old Frank, their own Frank, and also right like that you you did this outside of the tech eco, uh, like epicenter, right? Like I think that is also like very inspirational for a lot of folks here that you built that all out of uh, Australia. Basically. Yes, yeah. So 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 that mostly happened out of Australia. So we were, we we ended up actually adding two of our friends. Uh, Australian engineers that we happen to know, right? And so we did a lot of the prototyping in the spare bedroom of my friend in beautiful Sydney. And, uh, but, but also we kind of like, so then my brother went back to Denmark. We're very, uh, you know, short of cash. So he moved in with our mom back in Denmark where I'm born. He hates that part of the story. And I spent a fair bit of time just like cruising back to California to do these funding discussions, right? And so it was like California, Denmark, Sydney. We like to joke that we were all over the map. <laughs> Do you get it? Do you get it? I'm sorry. And uh, and but but it mostly happened in Sydney, um, and and we actually when Google bought us, we went to the the senior VP of engineering at Google, Alan Eustace. Who you may have heard of because he set the world record in jumping out of a spaceship with a parachute. Um, and uh, and we're like, hey, do you mind? Can we can we build uh, an engineering office in in Sydney, right? And and we completely expected that he was going to say, hell no, come back to California, right? Because that's how big companies work. And he was just like, sure. And then and I was like, really? <laughs> and he said, yeah, man, yeah, go. And and I'm like, okay. And then he said, yeah, because Larry wants me to build 100 engineering offices around the world. And if you do one in Australia, I only need to build 83 of them. And so, so that's awesome. And so that actually became the beginning of Google's engineering office in Sydney. And um, back then, so we're almost 20 years ago, right? Back then, Sydney was a very young ecosystem. And uh, because we, you know, we got a little bit of a profile with the whole Google thing, I got to be in front of the press a little bit. And they would always ask. They thought I was American. I'm from Denmark. And uh, they were like, is it possible to build an important, you know, earth-shattering tech company from as far away as Australia? And I said, of course it is. Um, and then they did, which was, which was great. And, uh, and I, I get the lot. Now I live in Athens. And I'm, I'm convinced, by the way, that Athens is going to be one of the next hotspots for entrepreneurship and and innovation, and, and we'll talk more about that later. But, but I actually have found that I, just as I enjoy being involved in startup in the early stages, I also enjoy being involved in tech ecosystems in the early stages, when it's a rocket ship that's just taken off. Welcome to and Cluj. You, and you get to, well, it's funny, I was going to say, you should all come to <laughs> Athens, because, because you know what, what I think, okay, I've only been here for a day, right? But I think this beautiful place, has an outsized talent pool. It's, you know, completely out of whack with the size of, of the place, right? Um, uh, Athens has a really um, amazing lifestyle. Um, and I think we should, you know, we should look at this whole region here as being really uh, one country with a few languages. And um, uh, we can make magic here happen, for sure. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, we're looking forward to all of our invite to, to Athens. Um, but may maybe, like... Um, Touching a bit on um, some of your some of your experiences at at, at Google at Yet Redux, you have been tremendously successful, obviously, with with, with Google Maps. Um, but I would love also to learn about like some of the things that 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 uh, you created and some of the hard learned lessons where it didn't <laughs> work out so well. Yes. Yeah. Look, I love to share my um, my mistakes, of which there are many, because I don't like it when people steal my mistakes. Right? Make your own <laughs> damn mistakes. <laughs> Um, and, and, and one of them we made was, um, it's funny actually when I look at, so I've, you know, I've been in tech for 30 years, but I haven't actually worked, you know, worked on maybe four or five, you know, major projects in that time. And, and when I stack rank them according to success with Google Maps, you know, still by far being the best one. And then I stack rank them according to how much money and resources and attention we had when we started. It's exactly opposite. Right, and, uh, and this may just be the way, uh, you know, that I suck at money, I don't know, but, but it could also <laughs> be that there's something to be learned. And actually, Sergey, whom we met a few times, of course, at Google, right, he had this phrase that, that scarcity brings clarity, right? That, and he argued, you know, when you don't have a lot of money, like we didn't have a lot of money, we did, you, you, you're forced to focus on just the key things that really make your idea, your product, your invention, stand out, right? Whereas if you have a ton of money, you want to do everything at the same time, it can be hard to manage. And so after Google Maps, 
Google loved us. It was mutual. It was still mutual, right? It's still my like you know my best professional experience was Google, and and afterwards they gave us like sort of twenty five million dollars worth of stuff, like sixty engineers, and massive office space down in Sydney, all the administrative help, and you know basically everything we wanted to build our next project, which was called Google Wave, also my brother's idea. Um, any Google Wave users in there? Anyone who remembers Google Wave? One, thank you. You're the best. <laughs> and so, and so uh, that was a really painful thing. So we, you know, we worked on this for years. We're very excited about it, and uh, and uh, we kind of came out of hiding after a year and a half, two years, and and demoed it at the Google I/O. Right, the big, uh, you know, it was like a room like this, but with like 5,000 people there, and we demoed it. It was an hour-long demo. We got a standing ovation. It's really hard to get geeks to stand up, myself included. My standing ovation, clapping. Um, and we put the video on YouTube. It's an hour long. It got watched 11 million times. Like that's more minutes than like Justin Bieber, <laughs> if, you, if you count minutes, right? And and then when we when we put out the beta, we got four million people signed up on day one. And when we started handing out invitations, people sold it for like hundreds of dollars on on eBay. Remember eBay? And um, and it felt awesome. There's this article on CNN. You can still find it. Where uh, they they it said like the genius brothers that started Google Wave and it even had pictures of us at, as kids like they went to Denmark found we were very cute when we were young <laughs> and uh, and it just it just felt great right and then they just like came crashing down in overnight it just like totally collapsed and we went from being the hottest thing to being the most laughed about thing and it was really painful. I mean, really painful. It's still kind of painful 10 years later, right? And this is like when I talk about risk, often in this modern world, like we're not like we're risking a house anymore. You know, we've made some money from Google Maps and we kept that money, right? And, and, and all that was fine, but this, this kind of public failure was actually pretty bad for, for mental health. And so, uh, you know, I've spent some time thinking about what the hell went wrong. And, uh, and, the, and the, the most important lesson that I learned from this is the, is the following, that when my brother and I create a product, we are our own first user. Very kind of, and we didn't think so much about it, it just felt natural, right? Like we built the mapping site that we wanted, and we built the communication tool that we wanted. Funny enough, I have zero sense of direction. It's kind of a joke that keeps giving. <laughs> the maps guy got lost again. <laughs> right? Like, peep, my friends deliberately let me kind of unconsciously lead when we're going somewhere and we always get lost if we're talking and I don't look at Google Maps. And so we built uh, Google Maps that was really, really good at not getting us lost, which turned out to be really well aligned with this mass market, right? That now billions of people use Google Maps. I'm pretty good at communication, if I can be modest for a second. It's kind of what I do. I communicate, I collaborate, I coordinate highly technical teams all around the world. And surprise, surprise, the tool that I need to be more efficient at communication is not very well aligned with a mass market, right? which is what Google cares about. And so, and so the lesson is right, you've got to be... Like, if, if you're developing things for yourself, you've got to make sure your needs are aligned with the mass market. And if they're not, you should not be developing it for yourself, right? And I still actually run into people who remember Google Wave fondly. And they're like, oh, man, it was the best thing ever. I can't believe Google sh shut it down. He's sitting over there, right? And I'm, and I'm like looking at a mirror image of myself, right? Someone, someone you know, tech worker, you know, ridiculously smart, very good looking, right? And there's just not that many people like that. It was a joke about it. I'm not that good looking. <laughs> I think we have a lot of smart tech workers here in that room. I but know. I anyway, know. Um, so maybe maybe like switching gears a little bit uh, post post your time at uh, Google when you started to become an angel investor. Yes. So I think obviously one of the most uh, successful deals you've done is uh, is Canva and invest in them very very early. Yes. So they 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 had their own person that connected you to them. Tell, tell us a little bit about like um, your your angel investing, and especially also for this audience, what what do you look like for in early stage startups that gets you excited to to join them and hopefully maybe invest in one of them in the audience here yes, today? Yes, yeah, I'd love to. We don't have any Romanian investments. It's crazy. Well, I have I've invested in R Romanian entrepreneurs outside of Romania, and you know I've definitely like you know observed Romanians got some big brains. 
Um, but the, uh, the, the Canvas thing, right? So they had met their Frank, whose name is Bill, Bill Tai, super successful angel investor, like 16 unicorns that he's seed invested in. And um, he's coming to Greece, by the way, to do a kite surfing themed <laughs> event in June 21. Hook me up for a, an invitation. Um, so, so he'd met these guys. Again, it was like this, right? So Bill was talking in Perth, mining town in Western Australia that has a good kite surfing beach. And there was a little tech festival and Bill gave a talk and Mel and Cliff, the founders, future founders of the camera came up. There's a picture of this. They clearly borrowed their suits and they were like, hey, Bill, we got this idea. And Bill found them compelling. He's like very good at finding people compelling. Um, and, and also maybe a little um, persistent, maybe very persistent, in fact. And at some point, he, because so we, we, uh, I was in Australia, and they were in Australia, right? And Bill had come through, and these guys did not happen to be software engineers. So it's a Mel's a graphics designer, Cliff is a business. I think they were still students back then. And Bill was like, these guys have something, man. I don't know what it is, but they have something. And, but they don't have a tech team. And it actually built a little bootstrap company where they had outsourced the software. And they had done OK in a niche of designing yearbooks, but the software was not that good. And so Bill was like, Lars, if you can help these guys recruit a tech team that you approve of, then I will invest. And he wrote this to both of us, right? So, so that now Mel was like, okay, my path to money is through Lars. And so we, we set out trying to hire her a tech team. And, and we succeeded, but it took a year. And, uh, um, and at first, uh, you know, she would, she would bring people and she'd find VCs and she'd go to networking events and bring people and we'd interview them. We did a lot of interviews and I'd like turn them all down because I didn't feel they were good enough. And when she tells a story at this stage, you can kind of like see in her eyes how much she wanted to like strangle me <laughs> at the time. But along the way, I got to introduce her to some of the people I'd worked with at Google, actually on Google Wave, because I, we recruited like an incredible team for Wave. Um, and one of them, the UI designer of Wave, was also a very accomplished JavaScript engineer. And so it was kind of clear that this guy is, is like perfect for them. He had unfortunately started his own startup. And it's a difficult pitch to go, hey, drop your own startup and go work for my startup. And, uh, and so it was more like, hey, help these guys out. But a year in, he himself left his startup. And he's now the, the co-founder of Canva, actually, Cameron Adams. He's the chief product officer. And, uh, and then after we landed Cameron, then uh, we approached this, um, this ridiculously smart software engineer, PhD out of Queensland, Australia, um, who, and I don't mean to stereotype, right, but he's one of the, the rare software engineers that were, with a really strong sense of aesthetics, right? And these guys were built, okay, that was a stereotype. And uh, these guys are building a graphics design tool. So we pitched Dave, Dave Herndon, and this was faster, we, we, Dave, because he saw Cameron join, right, and they worked together, and he was over, and then, then he went and told Google in Australia, where he worked, um, hey, I'm joining Lars's startup, it wasn't my startup, but uh, I'm joining the startup, and Lars is helping out, and then Google said, oh, please don't, please don't leave us, and here is five times your salary tomorrow if you stay. They 5x the salary, both cash and stock, right? He was already wow. really well paid. It was, it was crazy. They really wanted him to stay. And then he called me and, and Mel, and he's like, he was sad. And sad Dave called us, and he's like, I can't, I can't, I just can't say no to that. It's like, it's too much money. I can't say no to that. And then Mel, <coughs> I was like, that sucks. And Mel was like, no way that we're letting go of this guy. And so she wrote a 25-page graphical no uh, a novel, a little fairy tale about Dave. Um, very beautiful. She's a you know, graphic. They've published this. You can find it. And it's all about Dave and his wanderlust. And then he met Lars, and Lars introduced him to the good guys, and then evil Google. I hope there's no one from Google here. <laughs> evil Google would not let him go. And then in the end, he made the right choice, and it has a happy ending where he goes to join Canva and changes the world. And they send that to him, and then he changed his mind again and joined. And he's now the you know the CTO of a forty billion dollar startup down in in Australia. And uh, uh, you know I, I imagine he's one of Australia's richest entrepreneurs now. Not that that should matter too much, but like the professional satisfaction of building a thing like this, right? And they're still just getting started. One hundred and thirty-five million active users, growing like mad, mad, mad. 
Um, so yeah, and so so again, they found their Frank. His name was Bill. In that they have published their tree of of introductions, and it's all from Bill. Right, I'm like in the second row. It's a very pretty tree because they're good at pretty. But um, yeah, it was great. And then you know along the way, actually when Wave failed, I I found my Frank again. I went back to Frank in tears. So I, you know, give me some advice. You know, what do you do? And he said, well, to become an angel investor. Or you consider becoming an angel investor, because entrepreneurship is a is it is a roller coaster. A maddeningly roller coaster of ups and downs, right? And I was at the bottom of the bottom of the roller coaster in the basement, and he said, "Look, I was like that when I was your age," and um, and then I left, and I became like an angel investor, and um, and I really enjoy helping young entrepreneurs like you. This was a long time ago, uh, uh, you know, get things off the ground, and now I get to. It's still a roller coaster, but it's like I ride ten of them in parallel, and so for me, <laughs> it's kind of a little bit more flat, right? Then I had kids, he said, and I get to, and then you know, I actually made just as much money from this, and and got a great. Uh, so he was an angel investor in Google, that helps, right? And and then that's why I actually went looking for things like Canva. And uh, and I remember distinctly feeling okay, this is fun, but I'm en I'm envious of the entrepreneur. Like every time I had a come said, I wanted to be the entrepreneur, right? And so I actually went back into entrepreneurship. I took a job at Facebook, um, and then I went out, turned on a startup, didn't work so well. We're we running out of time. We do. Oh man, we're having so much fun. Um, and so <laughs> <laughs> and so then you know, eventually, ten years later, now I just like two years ago, ten years after. Canva, um, I decided to, to stop being an entrepreneur for a bit, and now I'm just an angel investor. Um, and I'm still envious, right? It's just that now that envy has turned into a checkbox before I will invest, right? If I'm not generally envious of this person, so I probably shouldn't invest. Um, and it is fun. I have a seven-year-old. I get to spend a bit more time uh, with her. I still work too hard. I can't help myself. Anyway, Lars, I, I really love the I love the stories. Maybe one very quick one to round this up. I'm sure there's a, a lot of people here in the audience pondering if they if they should start a company or not. Yes. So what would be your like advice for people that are like pondering this? How would you advise them to think about it? Yes. Okay, so look, so we have and not much time, but I, go to Y Combinator's website and find the videos of a series of lectures that they published on YouTube that they did at Stanford because the entire first lecture is about why you should not start a company. And it's like it's like a bunch of people that did start companies and did find success and they're all talking about how, what a terrible idea that is. And and the, the lesson is that you should really only do this if you like just can't not do it, right? And you should you should find all the other things you could spend your life on and be like 100% convinced that the only correct thing for you is to do this thing, right? That you have that kind of passion and that the problem you're solving is important enough to you, which means it better be important enough for the world. Like, it's, it's great to have made a little bit of money, um, but being an entrepreneur is a terrible way to make money. Like, you know, like in, in, in our space, a tech, the, the way if you want to make money and become like in the independent financially, join a startup that has already taken off. That's, you know, I, I made not a lot of money, but more money from just a job at Facebook when it was a young startup at $15 billion valuation, right? I still, it was still better than selling Google Maps to Google in just pure financial terms. Not in professional satisfaction, though, right? Obviously, Google Maps eclipses everything. But that, that's, my, that's my first bit of advice. Like, be really sure that, that this is really what you want to do because it's, it's very hard work and... Um, and that roller coaster really is 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 tough to go through, um, and then um, move to Athens, which will <laughs> which will greatly increase your chances of success. What a beautiful note to end on. Lars has invited us all to parties at Athens. So thank thank you so much, Lars. It was an honor having you here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.